scour the bloodstream of Bastion and are used in the daily necessities of transporting goods from one fort to another. You name it and they can transport people, vital supplies, resources, new tech, javelins, sentinels, weapons, armour, etc. The list goes on. There's nothing that these mechanical behemoths can't take, and nothing that they can't tackle, and without them, many of today's forts would perish from the harsh environment and the ever-changing force of the Anthem. Hello everyone, Feedy Hero here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at what the Striders are in Anthem. I will be covering as much as I know about them, and will also theorise around some of the areas around them that are left up in the air for us to discuss. So first the Striders, what the hell are they? They are four-legged heavily armoured transport vehicles and FOBs that stand at quite an impressive height, and as its name states, catch these strides away from one area to another, no matter the terrain. They seem to have a strong resemblance to a certain Star Wars vehicle, from the armour surrounding them, vulnerable legs, height, and how they can both transport things at a relatively slow pace. They don't seem to be able to move quickly from some of the in-game cutscenes I've seen which would mean long distance travel would take a number of days to weeks to be fully completed, and back as well in terms of how they're controlled. And on top of how they're controlled, that's an area that's a complete mystery, as I theorise that they don't rely on the simple steering wheel or clutch and gas system that we use in the modern day era. I believe that signet keys and a certain type of ember most likely play a part in operating them, as is already explained by law how a signet keys operates and what embers can do with the right properties adjustment to them. But how this all connects is still a unknown area. Although, sometimes you may get a mission to where you have to free Arcanist from the lockdown strider. And two things made apparent to us is to initially restarting a strider. One, it needs a certainly large battery that is installed near the nape of the vehicle. And two, it needs two power breakers from the side of the main strider units that need to be turned on. I guess this is how they are started in a way, or generally restarted, but it doesn't explain how they are properly controlled. The main cockpit for the user controlling the vehicle is near the head, with a long but slightly thin opening area which I guess is where they look out to in terms of where they need to be going, with the rest of the body being the main waiting area for everyone not operating the vehicle. Another feature about striders you may have noticed is that the top part of the vehicle, where javelins sometimes appear, have a rising platform in the centre section of the landing platform, which allows the user from within to raise the javelins upwards for deployment much easier. The mid-section of the strider looks to be detachable and allows the user from above the vehicle to come down to ground level whenever they please or go back up to enter the vehicle. It's quite a large area that the pods seem to take up so I'm not sure exactly how big exactly the rooms are for the users inside. In case of an emergency, the striders also by the looks of it can use this pod as a sort of emergency evacuation pod that looks like it can fit a large number of personnel and items before reaching its max capacity and protect the user from outside danger quite well. Once the users are in, they can safely be lowered down to ground level to where they can either wait for help or leave accordingly. Unfortunately, there only seems to be one way of entry out of the pod which put the users at risk as they can be easily surrounded without them knowing. There is also a keypad on the side of the pod, so if the user inside are stuck, then the people outside can open it, although it also made me wonder, what would happen if that was to break as well? Would the users be stuck indefinite, or is there another safety measures that can allow them to take the area to open up? There also seems to be another variant of striders used by the Dominion, with the same body structure and everything but have mounted turrets on the front of it. This is first seen in the Fall of Freemark cutscene, and in some concept art as well. So not only are they capable of taking people, javelins, and goods across the land, but they can also act as war machines for other factions, which is quite impressive when you think about it. Now from the outside they look like mobile armoured fortresses with how protected the main body area is, which is needed as they get occasionally attacked by scars and outlaws. But from the inside, they're even more impressive. Fully equipped with the necessary tools to traverse the vast lands, the inside of Strider is just as what you would imagine it to be, which would be cramped and fully packed to the brim for worldly adventures, yet spacious with enough room for medium sized crew to operate around. They have a number of rooms available, such as a small canteen, a forge, small sleeping area, a docking station for javelins to stop by and make repairs and a single amplifier chair, allowing ciphers to extend their telekinetic range much further. They seem to be very well crafted and sturdy to do their jobs as well, 
and support those that venture outside the world, which makes it very obvious as to why they are relied so heavily on by the people of Bastion. Although, thinking about it, for their prowess and sturdiness, there seems to be a lot of strider wreckage in Bastion which seems to indicate that there is some sort of structural weakness that the vehicle has. It's said that if they go near an active cataclysm, the outer shell is tough enough to take on the beatings, but the user inside will still suffer from the effects of the Anthem. Which I suppose makes sense as the Anthem is an unknown force capable of changing the law of physics for itself. Also, from watching some of them be attacked or damaged, their legs aren't as heavily armoured as the rest of the body, which makes them an easy target against small to large firearms. While the cockpit, although reinforced, just seem to have a window section open which can allow small bits of shrapnel to enter its way, it's still one of the main areas that can be hit easily and potentially put the strider out of action. If one of these areas are damaged at all, they seem to be unoperable for anyone until repairs are made. Which brings another question to the table. Considering their size and structure, do they suffer the same fate as javelins, where because of how expensive and uniquely designed they are, creating more of them is not a common thing in the world because of lack of resources, and in this case, are generally kept well maintained and passed down to others to make full use of them, and also save on costs. We know that javelins are heavily modified exosuits used by freelancers on a regular basis, so they need to stay updated all the time but don't seem to have a heavy resourcing load that the user needs to be aware of, unless severely damaged. Striders on the other hand are probably the biggest and well updated vehicle throughout the world, so maintaining their usage probably requires constant checkups on each mission done by them. Considering how often they use they are, I can see why a single damage near the vehicle's main weak points can be a major threat to users, as out in the wild, fixing them while threats are nearby isn't a task that many would want to take, unless having support. This is probably one of the reasons as to why we see a lot of abandoned and destroyed striders in certain areas of Bastion. Fixing them takes time, which depending where you are, could be done or not done. The cost of making a new one from scratch isn't something easily done because of limited resources, but also leaving a fully functional but damaged strider isn't another option that many would like to take. So we're placing the middle ground of either creating a new one from scratch, or fixing a slightly damaged or heavily damaged one, but still have something to work with. Life in Bastion doesn't seem to be yet any more easier than that. They're both pinnacle in design, but also flawed, but they're the only thing that the people of the land have to use for safe travels until other methods are found. Now, one thing to note, a user by the name of Jez433 from Reddit somehow managed to get into a strider with his own personal javelin, and managed to have a good look around the area which seems to me to be fully rendered and usable in game. But why this isn't present is another mystery for us to, well, gently to wait. So that everyone comes to the end of the lore video and a theory video for Anthem. I do hope you enjoyed it, as there is plenty more to come. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub, or even share for other Anthem lore users to see as well, and also theorise. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with random stuff I do, if that's your thing. But once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.